In this video, we're analyzing a device called a Venturi flow meter. And so here's the idea. If you want to measure the liquid flow in a pipe, you can just put a constriction in the pipe. So it's just a little bit narrower here. And first of all, the continuity equation forces the speed to go up there. And I'll just post a link to my video on the continuity equation as a reminder. And there it is. So the continuity equation is sometimes written as A1V1 equals A2V2. Each of those is just a product of cross-sectional area and the fluid speed at that point. But it's also important to remember that those products give you the flow rate in cubic meters per second at that point in the pipe. So all the continuity equation really says is the flow rate through each part of the pipe must be the same. Okay, the second main concept here is Bernoulli's equation, which is just an expression of the conservation of energy density in our fluid. And if you need a reminder, I'll post a link real quick to the video where that was derived. And when I take a look at Bernoulli's equation here, the gravitational potential energy density term is not going to matter. We're not talking about any appreciable changes in height here. We're just talking about a change in the fluid speed caused by the restriction in the pipe and then the pressure difference that results. So taking a look back at our Venturi flow meter real quick, what's the overall plan? You put a constriction in the pipe that causes the speed to go up. And that speed difference is going to lead to a pressure difference by way of Bernoulli's equation. Okay, so now we can get into the calculation. So what I'm going to do is look at the continuity equation and find the fluid speed in terms of that flow rate F, and that's going to be our unknown that we're trying to get eventually. So I have V1 is going to be the flow rate over A1. And V2 is going to be the flow rate over A2. And then we'll plug in to Bernoulli's equation, where I've already crossed out the gravitational energy density term because I just have this level device. And even if it's vertical, the height changes would cause negligible changes in pressure. And I get P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared equals P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared. Taking a quick glance at this, I see that if the speed of a fluid goes up, the pressure must go down in order to keep the total constant. So I know that this is the low pressure side. Now we know what P1 minus P2 is. It's 5 PSI. So I'm going to gather that on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, I'm subtracting this kinetic energy density term. And I'm going to factor out the 1 half rho while I'm at it. And it looks like when I express these speeds in terms of the flow rate, the only unknown I have left is the flow rate, so this is good. So I'm going to do a couple things in the next step. I'll multiply both sides by 2 and divide by rho, and I'm going to factor out the F squared. So I have a 2 times the pressure difference. Over the density, and this is water in this case, so it's a 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, equals F squared times 1 over A2 squared minus 1 over A1 squared. And I'm not terribly interested in cleaning up the solution algebraically here, so I'm just going to leave it as a complex fraction. So there it is. So now we have to take the pressure difference and put it in the proper units, which would be Pascal's. I plug in my density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter for water, and then I have to get these cross-sectional areas written down in the correct units. So I'm going to do that as kind of a side calculation over here. And I'm going to say that A1 is going to be pi R1 squared. And it's fine if you want to divide by 2 and get the radius of that. But I prefer to plug in that R is diameter divided by 2. And then I can re-express my cross-sectional area as 1 quarter pi diameter squared. This is a really convenient trick to remember. I plug in my diameter in the correct units. So in meters, and my cross-sectional area for 0.1 turns out to be 7.069 times 10 to the negative 4 square meters. Square meters are rather large compared to the cross-section in a reasonable pipe, so that's why I'm getting such a small number out of that. We do a similar calculation for A2. This time I'll skip the derivation of how I switched to diameter. And my diameter is 0.02 this time. And this time I get 3.142 times 10 to the negative 4 square meters. And then P1 minus P2, again I was careful to make sure that came out to a positive number. 
uh, because I know that the low speed side of this thing is the high pressure side. P1 minus P2 was 5 PSI, and I need to remember the conversion to Pascals. That's 6,895 Pascals for every pound per square inch. And I get 34,475 Pascals pressure difference. Okay, I'm ready to plug all this stuff in. I'm going to have to cram it in here pretty tight, it looks like. Again, water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And when I smash the numbers, I find a flow rate through this pipe. Again, that's volume per second of 0 0.00291 cubic meters per second. Now for a water pipe, a cubic meter per second is a huge volume, so I'm going to switch to liters per second. That's a factor of 1,000. So this gives me 2.91 liters per second moving through the pipe. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.